Can 5G exposure alter the structure and function of hemoglobin, causing coronavirus patients to die from oxygen deprivation? This is the question that we're going to explore in this special mini documentary from naturalnews.com and pandemic.news. This question came onto my radar after watching videos by New York City emergency room physician, Dr. Cameron Kyle Sedell. And he has treated thousands of people in New York City for all kinds of different conditions, including in the past bacterial pneumonia, viral pneumonia, and now coronavirus. And he says that they're treating the wrong disease, that this is not a viral pneumonia. It's a disease of oxygen starvation. The patients he's seeing in New York City are suffering from something closer to high altitude sickness, as if they had been dropped off on the top of Mount Everest without acclimation. They're dying from lack of oxygen, not from viral pneumonia. And the ventilators, he says, are damaging the lungs of patients because the ventilators are forcing pressure into the lungs, damaging the delicate lung tissues that transfer oxygen to the blood, causing more deaths than we should be seeing. And he warns that unless we change the programming methods of these ventilators, potentially hundreds of thousands of lungs may be permanently damaged and, and people may die needlessly. But his analysis brought up an important question because we have knowledge here at Natural News about 5G electropollution and how it alters the membrane permeability of cells throughout the body and how we've covered before published studies on how 5G exposure can drive calcium ions into cells through what's called a voltage-gated calcium channel or VGCC and other ions can be driven into the cells as well. It doesn't have to be calcium, it could be potassium ions for example. But this causes cell toxicity and it's documented now to lead to neuropsychiatric effects. In fact, according to a study published in Environmental Research, 5G exposure causes the production of peroxynitrites in the body, under the skin, in the blood because of this voltage that is driven into the skin when you're targeted with a 5G directional beam. You see 5G technology targets you with a very narrow beam that's aimed just at you and your device. It doesn't go out in every direction like 4G and 3G. This is a narrowly targeted beam that targets you specifically. And so we took a look at some of the damaging effects of 5G covered in that published science article and they include the same symptoms that are now being observed from coronavirus patients. That includes sperm and testicular damage, neuropsychiatric damage. We've seen coronavirus patients losing their minds, becoming violent, becoming, well, even personality changes. We're also seeing cellular DNA damage in both 5G exposure as well as coronavirus patients, uh, apoptosis, cell death, and cardiac and blood pressure disruptions in both groups. In fact, high blood pressure has been the highest comorbidity factor in coronavirus deaths. People who have high blood pressure and are on blood pressure medications, which alter the expression of ACE2 receptor sites in the lungs, appear to die in much larger numbers from coronavirus infections. Now, what this brings up is this very important question. If 5G exposure can alter other cells in the body and drive substances into those cells that don't belong there, causing cell toxicity, could the same thing be happening with red blood cells? And hemoglobin, which is the oxygen-carrying structure that is found in red blood cells that allows oxygen to move from your lungs into your blood and eventually into your cells. Hemoglobin is the kind of molecule that has its function altered if its structure is altered. It's made up of a delicate combination of proteins, amino acids, and elements, and different groups such as the heme group. And if any of this is disrupted, it won't function correctly. What's fascinating is that hemoglobin transmorphs based on whether it's needing to carry oxygen or needing to carry carbon dioxide, but it changes its shape and even its color. It changes from red to blue based on whether it's carrying oxygen or not. So oxygen actually leaps into hemoglobin and each hemoglobin molecule can bind with four molecules of O2. And at the same time then, carbon dioxide leaps back onto the hemoglobin so that hemoglobin then transports the carbon dioxide back to your lungs while the molecule itself is in a completely different form. And then at the lungs, the carbon dioxide leaps essentially off the molecules into your lungs and you exhale the carbon dioxide. In order to accomplish this though, there are very specific proteins and amino acid chains, including histidine, which must be present in the proper place in the exact correct shape. 
And if you don't have the right shape, then hemoglobin has higher affinity toward carbon monoxide than it does oxygen. And that causes the hemoglobin molecule to be filled with carbon monoxide, which is a poison. And if that were happening in your body, you would suffer oxygen deprivation because your hemoglobin molecules could not carry the oxygen that the cells of your body need in order to breathe and stay alive. This appears to be what may be happening in coronavirus patients. They are suffering from oxygen deprivation. Their lungs are still working. Their diaphragm muscles are still working. They are attempting to respirate, but the blood is no longer carrying oxygen. Could 5G be causing that? And I believe the answer is yes. 5G, because it alters the permeability of cell membranes, is very likely driving other elements or molecules or perhaps ionic elements, minerals and so on, onto the hemoglobin molecule that is prohibiting the oxygen from being able to leap to the molecule from the lungs as is normal. And in looking at this molecule, I doubt that 5G exposure is making hemoglobin unable to bind with O2, but rather 5G exposure is creating voltage, which is driving other molecules or elements onto the molecule, which is then altering the structure, making it unable to carry O2. And once that happens, people begin to die from oxygen deprivation. At the same time, this may be potentiating the ability of the coronavirus to move through cell membranes and invade cells and take over the mitochondria and replicate themselves using you know, reverse transcriptase, uh, RNA-based nanotechnology that these viruses invoke in order to replicate. So what we're really talking about here is almost a binary weapon system. The patients that have the most vulnerability and that are most susceptible to dying from this have both a dangerous virus, the Wuhan coronavirus, which is a bioengineered weapon system, it's a biological weapon, and they have exposure to 5G. And this also explains why some of the other symptoms we're seeing, such as neuropsychiatric damage, damaging brain cells, testicular damage, sperm cell damage, and so on, is shared as common symptoms across both 5G exposure as well as the coronavirus infection. So I believe we are looking at a catastrophic error on the part of humanity, thinking that the world has to be connected through these very high energy beams of electromagnetic radiation that target individuals that are holding mobile devices and that this exposure may be the downfall of human society. But you're not allowed to talk about this because the very companies that benefit from this telecommunications infrastructure, i.e. Google, YouTube, Twitter, Facebook, and so on, they are banning anyone who talks about 5G being a hazard to public health. You are banned in the same way that you're banned from talking about vaccines. Now let's talk about vaccines for just a minute here because Bill Gates is funding efforts to build vaccines. Knowing that the 5G towers are altering cell membrane permeability, which means that once you are given the Bill Gates vaccine, if you are then subsequently exposed to 5G electromagnetic pollution, whatever was in the vaccine will be driven into your cells with a potentiation that's created by the voltage gated ion channels. So effectively, this means that Bill Gates can put very low amounts of toxins into the vaccines, knowing that those toxins will be very aggressively driven into, for example, testicular tissue, sperm tissue, damaging sperm production, leading to the infertility that Bill Gates has been trying to achieve. So now today we understand the mechanism by which that can be achieved by Bill Gates. That is to push 5G into every city, expose everybody to 5G, alter the permeability of their red blood cells, and then hit them with a mandatory vaccine without which they won't be allowed to go to work, thereby making sure that the toxins in the vaccines are driven into the cells, especially the testicular cells and neurological cells. And what does all this add up to? A global depopulation agenda. And it's being rolled out right in front of your very eyes. And this is why you are a prisoner in your own home. This is why you are being corralled like cattle through Walmart, treated like a prisoner because you are already a prisoner under a depopulation agenda being carried out by a fascist medical police state that's funded by people like Bill Gates. Make no mistake, you have been targeted for termination. And this is how it's going to work.
This has been a Pandemic.News video report. If you want to live, read Pandemic.News.